Welcome to the Nuvasive Peer Insight series and the topic of to today is the use of Atrex putty and the question is does that match the gold standard in bone fusion? Um, these series were organized um, due to the corona pandemic to make sure that we can still communicate and share knowledge with each other and um, we will go into some of the studies that were performed at my department in Utrecht. My name is René Castellijn. I'm the professor of orthopedic surgery at the U University of Utrecht. And we have actually had a long-standing history of interest in regenerative medicine solutions, both for cartilage and for bone. And during this session, we would like to go into some of those studies that have looked specifically at this bone substitute. And for that reason, I would like to uh, introduce my dear colleague and long-standing collaborator, Professor Mario Kraut, who has been the lead investigator on these studies. Mario, can you introduce yourself, please? Thank you, uh, René. Yes, it's, uh, it's an honor for me to, uh, to discuss with you the use of uh, Atrex Puri, which is a microporous ceramic, as an uh, alternative for iliac crest uh, bone graft. I'm uh, working at the uh, Department of Orthopedics also as a spine surgeon in, in uh, Utrecht. Many, many years ago, I did my, my thesis on, um, on bone regeneration. That was in the early uh, 2000s. And at that time, we were mainly focusing on cell-based bone tissue engineering. And for that purpose, we, uh, we had to um, optimize the cells and we had to optimize the scaffolds. And these scaffolds are the uh, microporous ceramics uh, we are talking about today. René. Right, thank you. Uh, so you have a long-standing history in, in this relatively basic line of research and um, we're looking forward to what you will share with us uh, at the later stage of this, uh, of this session. And the topic of this session is that if a surgeon um, aims for a fusion, it should really fuse. Whatever the reason for the fusion, uh, or the, the wanted fusion, the uh, outcome should be that the bone is fused. And if we have a pseudarthrosis, uh, that should not be considered a good result. Um, so this is what we will be talking about. And the uh, gold standard, of course, for bony fusions, um, both in the extremities but also in the spine, is to use iliac bone graft um, as a uh, adjunct to the surgical procedure and to promote the bony healing. Uh, into body cages, uh, into body grafts, and also the posterior lateral fusion rely heavily on the use of iliac bone graft. And we all know that this, uh, this advantages of uh, using a iliac bone graft being mainly that you have to obtain the bone graft from the iliac crest, and that means the operation will be longer, uh, the blood loss will increase, and there may be additional bone um, uh, donor site uh, pain and complaints later on. So there have been a number of alternatives um, that have been developed, but many don't have that much of a proven efficacy, uh, especially not when used standalone. Some of them have been shown to work when they're used with iliac, uh, when they're mixed with iliac bone graft, but standalone is a different question. And the addition of bone morphogenic proteins or demineralized bone matrix has also shown efficacy, but uh, there's definitely drawbacks to that and complication of the bone morphogenic proteins and the lack of predictability of the demineralized bone matrix uh, are known um, drawbacks of that technique. So if we would be able to have a, um, a synthetic um, bone graft, then which would help us in obtaining that required fusion, then that would mean that we have really uh, a lot to offer to the patient and uh, in that sense also to the surgeon. So a number of bioactive ceramics have been used and they have all unique features, but there's not really too much um, evidence on uh, the superiority of one compared to the other. And um, in this session, we would like to give some more uh, background data on why some perform better than the others. The question really why there is so little evidence for standard use of these, these ceramics as a standalone device. I mean, not, not 
in conjunction with uh, Iliac Crest Barn, but what, why is there so little evidence on standalone use of these, um, these cer cer ceramics? Can you tell us more about that? Yes, of course. The most reasonable explanation and logical explanations is because most of the ceramics are actually not good enough to be used as a standalone implant. Um, if you use them, uh, it will always look nice at the X-ray because they are dense and they kind of mimic bone. So that makes it very attractive to use them, uh, and especially if they if you use the ceramics as an uh, extender of the bone graft, uh, it will be very difficult to distinguish uh, the effect of the ceramics compared to the bone graft. And if you have a nice fusion in the end, uh, you are happy as a surgeon and you really think you did something uh, that made sense. However, in, in the few studies that were done to look at ceramics as standalone, uh, Results have been uh, disappointed and um, it has mainly been abandoned until uh, recently to use the ceramics for posterolateral lateral fusion as a standalone graft. Yeah, so does that have to do with the, the microstructure and architectural aspects of the ceramics? What, what plays an important role in that, uh, in that area? Yes, absolutely. Actually, due to our research on bone tissue engineering, which was a very, um, people were very optimistic about bone tissue engineers engineering with cells. And for that reason, there was a lot of uh, investment in that type of research. And due to that investment, um, we could not only improve the cells, but also improve the ceramics. And then generation upon generation resulted in ceramics uh, that were much better than uh, the previous versions and uh, we believe that is mainly because of what we call the microstructure and micro means uh, much less than uh, micrometers but, but several um, uh, hundreds of nanometers uh, small um, crystalline structures uh, that have shown to be capable of um, stimulating uh, blood monocytes uh, to act actually like osteoclasts uh, which likely results in a kind of a uh, bone remodeling stimulus. This is hypothetical, of course, uh, but um, we have seen these uh, microporous ceramics to act much uh, more uh, bioactive in, in many uh, animal models. Uh, yeah. And uh, as such, um, we also saw more bone formation. Okay, so that's basically a whole family of these, these calcium phosphates um, uh, in different architectural configurations, more or less, uh, and that configuration leads to different results in, in, in clinical practice, as I understand it from, from you. Is that correct? So that was the big question. Uh, we did see a lot of positive results in animal models, but the big question, of course, was uh, if it is also uh, doing that great in uh, clinical practice. Uh, and for that reason, uh, we had to design a, a, a large clinical study. So, Moyo, could you tell us a little bit more about this specific ceramic option? The ceramic option is actually the result of our investigations on uh, bone regenerative strategies. As I told you, we were looking initially for cell-based bone tissue engineering, but ended up with a very nice uh, ceramic that appear to be uh, osteoinductive in certain animal models. Uh, the ceramic was unique, or is unique, based on his, uh, its microporosity. And with microporosity, I mean that when you look at it uh, at very high magnification, as in the uh, images uh, below, you can see that the uh, materials actually build up of very small granules. These uh, granules are several hundreds of nanometers, and these, this structure causes uh, a unique surface structure that stimulates um, blood monocytes to act uh, like osteoclasts. And by doing this, uh, a kind of regenerative stimulus is uh, uh, initiated, which probably is the reason why we see osteoinduction in certain animal models. Uh, these ceramics were used to make the atrix uh, putti. And the atrix putti is a, a, a combination of these uh, microporous ceramics combined with a binder. And together, this allows a very moldable and pliable uh, uh, implant 
that can be used uh, just like uh, autologous bone graft for posterior, posterior lateral fusion. And in the little movie, you can see how easy it is to, to mold this uh, putty into any uh, desired uh, configuration. So the uniqueness of the substance is not in the carrier material, which makes it so pliable, but it's in the microstructure of the ceramic that's inside it. Is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, Microporous ceramic, that is uh, the feature that makes this uh, ceramic different uh, from uh, many others and, and many previous uh, versions uh, that we investigated. See what you mean. So that has led to a, a, a number of theoretical considerations, but now about the proof of the pudding. And that's, that's where we go into the studies that you have performed. I, I think I should mention also the name of Mechtold Leer, who is the PhD student who did a lot of work, who is not present at, these, um, at, at this presentation. But uh, can you tell us more as the PI of that, of that um, study line what was investigated and give us an idea of what the results were. Sure, uh, this was quite a, a quite a project. Um, first of all, when we are talking about fusion, uh, we are talking about what we call a binomial uh, result. It's either fused or non-fused, uh, and that means you need a lot of patients to see if there is a significant difference. In our case, we want to look at non-inferiority with a standard study that would mean that we need about 150 patients per arm. Uh, so 150 patients treated with the atrex as a standalone and 150 patients treated with uh, uh, bone graft. Uh, fortunately, uh, we were aware of the so-called intra-patient uh, model. Uh, in this model, we are actually using the patient as his own control. Uh, and that means that with a, a standard posterior lateral fusion, you have a very nice and comparable left and right side. And on one side, we implanted the uh, atrex putti, and on the other side, we implanted the iliac uh, bone graft, um, according a, a uh, allocation uh, that was randomized, and uh, we opened that envelope uh, during surgery. So during surgery, determined on which side we would uh, position the autograft bone or the uh, ceramics. Yeah. Uh, that way the sample size could be uh, reduced uh, dramatically and we calculated that about 100 patients uh, were needed, so a sample size of 100. Uh, we in could also include uh, different patients, so not only one level surgery but real life patients, patients with uh, multi-levels uh, between T10 and S1. Uh, with all kinds of uh, comorbidities, with or without into body cages. So this this model was very versatile because the patient was always his own control. Said we 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 included 100 patients. It took about uh, one and a half year year in in multiple uh, uh, centers in the Netherlands, and then after one year we um, uh, assessed fusion with a CT scan. Um, yeah. I think the CT scan is an absolutely a must. Um, simple x-rays will not tell you if there's a fusion or not. There's so much literature that indicates that what we perceive as a fusion on, on x-ray is actually not a fusion when we look at it with CT scan. So uh, we had um, approval uh, by the ethical committee to have a CT scan for all these patients after one year. And then we assessed fusion, uh, blinded, of course, to uh, different observers, a radiologist and a orthopedic surgeon, a spine surgeon. They scored fusion and they found uh, actually um, what we had expected uh, per site and per level. So one intertransverse process fusion, the, the success rate of that was 50%. Looking at any fusion between left or right, that resulted in about a 70% uh, fusion rate after one year. Yeah. Uh, and after uh, two years, this was 80%. We found a very similar uh, fusion rate between the um, atrix putty and the uh, autologous bone graft. They were almost identical, uh, like, like yeah. 49 and 51% or something. So this actually That's confirmed true. the non-inferiority of atrix as an uh, autograft uh, substitute. Yeah, the skin of your fusion was trabecular bone in between the 
facet joints in between the in the transverse processes what what exactly was your definition of fusion yeah that's a very uh, very important question uh, that first of all that has to be determined before you start uh, scoring uh, we decided yeah. to to judge any continuity of bone between the two vertebrae on one side as a fusion so this could be either between the transverse processes, between the facet joints, or uh, from a lamina to um, in the uh, video. There's a complementary to this. Uh, you can see a very nice uh, fusion, a classic fusion between both the transverse processes, but also the lamina and the um, and the uh, uh, facet joints. Uh, and in this patient, actually, you see fusion on both sides. So this this patient is a very good fuser. We disclosed that on the right side it was the atrex puti and on the left side the um, autologous perfect fusion uh, uh, and you, you, you can't see the difference anymore. And in your surgical technique, the, both the putty and the iliac bone graft was placed on the decorticated transverse processes and the decorticated and um, uh, the, 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 the facet joints that were taken out, I guess. I assume that it was part of the standard procedure. Yeah. And then you saw differences in where the fusion finally occurred, but there was real similarity between the two sides. So between the, uh, uh, the, um, the bone graft, the iliac bone graft and the putty, uh, they performed equally well. That's what you're saying. Uh, exactly, yes. So the bone bed was everything from the lamina to the tip of the transverse processes. So we yeah. positioned the graft there. Uh, and we see different locations of fusion, but always when there was a continuity, we've scored it as a fusion. Okay. Well, I think that gives us the um, most important results of, um, of this study, actually a series of studies, I would say. Um, is there anything you would like to add to what you've already told us? The uh, ceramic, uh, as it is used, uh, one should be aware that it is, uh, it is completely resort. So sometimes you see ceramics that m maintain uh, uh, almost forever, and that looks very nice on an X-ray, but in the end that's not what you want. This ceramic no. is resorbed, so after one year we did not re uh, retrieve or uh, see any uh, remnants of the uh, ceramic, which uh, in my mind is advantage. I think from what you've told us is that without the additional procedure of obtaining the ilia crest bone, um, the tendency to, uh, to fuse the spine is, um, is, is similar to what you achieve with the gold standard, the iliac crest, when you use the atrex putti. Do I say that right? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So thanks a lot, Mario, for, um, for taking us uh, along these, these different studies and all the outcomes that you have just described. And I think this is a hugely important topic it's very obvious that uh, spine surgery uh, has become much and much, much more uh, extensive than not, not too long ago even. And um, I just looked up a uh, editorial written by Wilco Pearl in the New England Journal in uh, two, 2016. And he talks about 15 fold increase of number of fusions in the United States, fusion operation, fusion attempts and also 50% uh, of the patients requiring decompression also re receive a fusion attempt. And even in the group with spondylolisthesis, it's around almost 100%. Um, and obviously in this group, we need to make sure that the, um, the injury of the operation is as little as, as possible. This is big surgery with a lot of complications anyway. And if there's any way we could reduce the risks for the patients and still get a reliable result, or at least a result that's not less reliable than what the gold standard has to offer, I think um, that's an important message. I think this is what you showed us, and I think uh, this is where we should uh, conclude this, uh, this uh, session of the online learnings uh, presented by Nuvasiv, and I thank you all for your attention. Mm -hmm.